that was brought during the days of revival from um, late 1950s up to about 1990s. Yeah. We had that revival of miracles, signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. But then there was a shift and that shift removed that crowd of miracles and brought a crowd of fake miracles. Mm. You can remember even wow. Kent Yen was <laughs> in the front line mm. of fighting <laughs> those fake miracles yeah. and exposing <laughs> fake preachers right. and exposing things that were done that were not right. Mm. Well, I hope you have not forgotten Mwende who used to do this. <laughs> These are some oh, of yes, the things I that came. Remember that. And they caused a lot of shame to the Church of Jesus Christ in Kenya. Yeah. And. Uh, Part of bringing Ben Hinn in Kenya is about that. Mm. Why, why the shift? Why, why did this happen? Mm. And uh, we remember people, when T.L. Osman came to this country uh, those many years ago, uh, we see that uh, a lot of preachers rose up that were doing authentic, uh, which we call notable miracles. Right. A miracle that can be verified mm. by doctors, a miracle that can be. I, I also used to do them. I did those miracles in those mm. early days of our, our ministry because the heavens were supporting us. Mm. The air was supporting us. Th these are some of the things that uh, may, maybe others may not understand. Yeah. They may say we are not praying enough, but in Kenya we pray a lot. That's true. We read ministries of repentance and what, but there is something that happened mm. and it caused this to happen. Right. Yes. We'll come to that. And I like it because you say, even for you, mm -hmm. these was uh, you know, things that used to happen yeah. and happened right. Yeah. Uh, Bishop Akama, let's, let's talk about <clears throat> not even uh, just what has been happening here. We have had very few instances, probably none, where preachers have you know, also gotten breakthrough to, to speak out there and to, <coughs> be, you know, to, to shine and to, to be used greatly. Yes. You know, preachers as well as even businesses. We, there are places where we really get to struggle when we go beyond the boundaries of this nation. Uh, yes, you find um, mm -hmm. the K Kenyan preachers. Yeah. Um, there, there's really none that you can say who would go to, let's say, Nigeria and hold a huge meeting. The other day we had uh, Apostle Salman from Nigeria. That's true. And he held a big meeting in uh, Kasarani. Yeah. And a hundred or so thousand people gathered. True. Um, now, which Kenyan preacher, can you tell me, has gone, man of God, has gone to Nigeria and done the same? Not even Nigeria, just here, Tanzania. Which man of God from Kenya has gone to Tanzania or Uganda and held the same? The, the man of God, um, uh, Pastor Kayanja, comes here and hold big meetings. Now, the same has affected our gospel music industry. Mm. We don't see um, mm. Kenyan gospel music being played in uh, Guinea, in Ghana. Mm. But we know Nigerian ones, we know Chineke, yeah. we know Ogolo, those, those Niger we play their songs here. We play South African songs here. Congo. So uh, we play Congolese songs here. Yeah. The Congolese come here. That's true. And, and um, if you check the economies, it, probably Kenya would have a bigger economy. It means Kenya should be really dominating them right. in, even in the area of gospel music. And this looks to have affected even the corporate world because um, not many Kenyan companies are having breakthroughs in mm -hmm. other countries. They might dominate here, but if they go to another country, they start to struggle. Yeah. Like uh, the Archbishop has said, it seems the atmosphere, the anger mm -hmm. is not cooperating with us. Mm -hmm. There's a problem that is restricting us. And this is why as spiritual people, as uh, spiritual leaders, we're asking ourselves, what is it and what can we do so that that thing can move and we can see breakthroughs in Kenya yeah. that we are seeing in other countries. We are singing Rwandese music here. Right. And it's being and sung in Tanzanian church. Music. And a lot of Tanzanian music. Yeah. You have just hosted a Tanzanian group here. Yes. Which, Tanzania, <laughs> which Kenyan group is being hosted by a national TV in Uganda, yeah. in Tanzania. So there's a problem. Mm. And we need to look at that problem yeah. and see what is it that as people we can do because God is God of all. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There's no lesser God for Kenya than for yeah, Uganda. That's true. true. Yes. I like it. You know, even in uh, when you, those who are um, in the academia, yes. when you have an issue, you have to do a problem statement. Uh -huh. And I like it because you have decided to sit down and say, surely, surely, yeah. there is a problem. There's a problem. So, Archbishop, what yes. is this problem? Uh, where where did uh, the rain start beating us? 
Yeah. Uh, if we look back towards the 90s, the early 90s, the move of miracles <coughs> and wonders was, was there. Mm. And as the Bible tells us, they, they, there is a man in the Bible called Jabez. Mm. Right. Jabez discovered that in his life, he had limitations. It's like he had a ceiling. You can't go beyond that. Mm. It's like he had a boundary that you can't go beyond this. And Jabez uh, did this. He sought God and he also sought information uh -huh. from other people. Right. What, what, what causes pain in my life? Mm. Why am I limited? Mm -hmm. Why don't I go as far as I would want? Mm. And that is what the church in Kenya has done. Like Jabez. Jabez discovered that his mother cast him. Mm. That is information from people. You don't have to seek God yeah. to get such information. Yeah. He got it from neighbors. He got it from relatives. Yeah. They told him, don't you know your, your name is Jabez? <laughs> that is written in the book of Chronicles. Yeah. Don't you know the, the meaning of the word Jabez is pain? Mm. So you are limited. Wherever you go, uh, you are not given leeway. Mm. Because something happened. You caused your mother a lot of pain. Mm. And then when he heard this information, the Bible says he went to God and uh, he sought God and told God, if you would extend my boundaries, mm. extend my tent, mm. if you would make me great, if you would make me acceptable among people, and the Bible says God had him. That is what we decided to do as the Church of Kenya. Right. We decided to consult uh -huh. and ask, right. why did these things happen suddenly? And we got some very astonishing information. Mm. Uh, we got to know that some of the major prophets that came to this country and did miracles, signs, and wonders were offended by the church in Kenya. Because when they brought the gospel to Kenya, they brought it together with the cash. They came with a lot of money and together with the gospel. Uh, people like T.L. Osborne also came with a lot of money. Uh, Boris Aruro. Uh, people like T.D. Jakes came with a lot of business people from U.S. Uh, people like Yogi Shaw came with a thousand, uh, a thousand business people from South Korea to come and invest here. Th that is what happened. They did not just come with the gospel. They came with a lot of money. Mm. Unfortunately, they found a very poor church in Kenya. So the money was squared. Some of them were very much offended. And some of them even tried to pursue uh, the mystique that happened and they were uh, hindered from coming to Kenya. So from that time, things became bad. And uh, uh, when we got this information, we said we will turn to God. Yeah. And by turning to God, that is where Ben Hin is now coming um, in. Yeah. Yes. I mean, those are very, very heavy things. Yeah, you know, you were talking about Yes. And I'm sure when some of these ministers came, they had a very good agenda. Mm. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, and they met people who had a different agenda. Yeah. You know? They had a stomach agenda. And so when they left, they left um, with a heart. They were offended together right. with their teams. They left in a um, very bad mood. Archbishop, help us for, yeah. for someone who does not understand what this means. What does that mean to even that person and to God as well? <clears throat> now, if we think about the book of Matthew, look, they say that if a minister of the gospel comes your way mm. and you offend them, you refuse to receive them, what happens is they curse you. It's like these people left a curse because they did not leave us with the peace, they left us very unhappy. Even some of them today, because we have approached some of them, some of the major ministers of the gospel, they are saying, I will never come back to Kenya. Kenya is not a good country. The church in Kenya is not good. But it is some few individuals who caused mm. this man of God to speak about Kenya as a whole, yeah. whereas they offended just a group of Christians. All right. And therefore, we took the initiative to go and find this man of God uh -huh. and tell them we are sorry. Yeah. We are sorry. <laughs> we are sorry. And as we told them we are sorry, we decided to invite one of the major, now major men of God in the, in the world, that mm. is Ben Hinn, right. to come here and bless this country. That's why the poster is written, 
healing the nation. Uh -huh. Of course, he will heal the nation uh, financially, physically, spiritually. Uh, but the idea here was to come and heal the church in Kenya, mm. to come and restore the glory that was lost due to mismanagement of finances and other things that happened between visiting preachers and local preachers. And we believe that by turning to him and telling him, on behalf of all those preachers, come and bless this country. When he blesses this country, everything will turn around. And uh, these things will happen. All right. I'm, 